Good. Whoa. Well, if you weren't awake, you are now. Good morning. I could even hear you through the masks. That's great. I'm Jill Jungers, and I'd like to welcome you to Homecoming Sunday. Wait a minute. What does that mean, Homecoming Sunday? You think of high school football, right? Well, homecoming is a return to home. You're like, yeah, well, some of us never left. But it's also a gathering of family and friends. And so I'd like to welcome you. Because we've been separated by summer events, and we've definitely all been separated by COVID, right? So we're here to celebrate being able to safely gather together again and rejoice in the live stream that we have, that we can stay connected even if we can't be together. And I see some faces that I haven't seen for a long time, so it's so exciting that you're here. Either way, whether you're here in person or on live stream, we welcome you. And if this is one of your first times with us, we really welcome you. And if you would like to know more about Hillcrest, please contact Pastor Jill or Pastor Jerry. There are a few announcements I have. Um, Staff Parish Relations Committee will be meeting this Tuesday at 6 o'clock on Monday, the 20th, Loaves and Fishes will meet at 3 o'clock. And I want to remind you of our church family meeting that we're having. This is like a town hall meeting where you get to come and learn information about what we have done at Hillcrest in the last year, year or two and where we're headed in the future. And your input is vitally important to what we are doing in Hillcrest both for our community here, for the Bloomington community, and for the world. So I would really, really urge you to come to one of those meetings. There will be two of them. The first one is Sunday, September 26th at 6, at, I'm sorry, 3 o'clock. And the other one is Tuesday, September 28th at 6.30 we will social distance, and you will be required to wear masks. For those reasons, if you could please register, that would be very helpful. You can either talk to Katie, or you can sign up on the bulletin board back by the water fountain that we're currently not using. Um, oh, and Zoom will also be an option. Thanks, Nancy. Um, if we need to, we will add another meeting because we really want you to be involved in the future of Hillcrest as we do God's work. So God has called us to be a community of believers. I am so glad that you are here, and I pray that you will be blessed through this service so that you can then bless others. Welcome home. And as well as being home sent, um, homecoming Sunday, we're also celebrating our children today, and especially those who are receiving their Bible. So we always think, also think of this as Bible Sunday. And for um, 
In honor of that, we are going to start by singing Tell Me the Stories of Jesus, which are found in the Bible. And then the second one then would be um, a fun song, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And we haven't practiced this, but we're going to, um, it's like kind of an echo thing. So we'll start with the people on the east side. You're the east side, followed by the west side. And Jill and I will hold up signs to let you know when to sing, but you all know the song. So just give, give us some grace that we might screw up, but you know the song, so enjoy. Uh, please stand as you're able and let's sing together. Tell me the stories of Jesus. I'd like to invite the kids up. Yep, if you guys can sit down here. All right, I'll move over. All right, I have to have my mask off so I can talk, but thanks for wearing yours, okay? Because we do that to be respectful of people and to be safe. Right? All right. So, how's school? Good. Yeah? Are you glad to be back in school? Yeah. Not really. <laughs> well, you know what? I kind of get that. It's a little... Pre algebra? What? I couldn't even do algebra in high school, Nathan. <laughs> wow. Well, one of the things we do in school is read, right? We learn to read, we read. Do you have a favorite book? And wait, think about this before you answer. Um, it could be a book you're reading now. It could be a book you read a while ago. Or, Connor, it could be a book someone read to you when you were really little. Who has a favorite book? Nathan. This book called Cardboard Kingdom. Why do you like it? Oh, 
off the street. Yeah, so it's about people and how they're creative and how they use cardboard, and it's interesting. Okay, Hannah. The great white shark. Oh, the great white shark. Why do you like that? <laughs> because um, I like sharks, and they have sharp teeth. And, ooh, yeah, you're right. Okay, Tyler? Um, I like A Wolf Called Wonder. A Wolf Called Wonder. Why do you like that book? So it's about a wolf who learns how to hunt, and they go in a pack. They go together, and they learn together how to hunt, right? Ellie? The Pet Sitter's Club. The Pet Sitter's Club? Is that kind of like the Babysitter's <laughs> Club that my kids used to read? <coughs> but, but they take care of pets. Love it. So you like it because it's about caring for people? Connor? Walter's story? Why do you like that? What? A dog that lives 25 years and it's been astray and then is it finally found? Well, few anyway. Few years. Is it found? Okay. Anybody else? You know what? Those are all, those sound like really great books. You know what one of my favorite books is? <laughs> dog Man. <laughs> I have a lot of those at my house because of you, Tyler. <laughs> You're right, the Bible. Okay, but here's the harder question. Why do you think it's one of my favorite books? Nathan. It does talk about our Lord and Savior. Why else do you think I like it? Because you care for one another. Okay, and you know what? Everything that you just said to me, creativity, excitement, being saved, being found, being part of a pack, part of a group, all those things are in the Bible. Crazy, right? It's like it's, there's good guys, there's bad guys, there's action, there's love, there's breaking the rules. Ooh, you don't do that, do you? Never. It's there's war, there's guidelines for living, but most of all, there's stories of hope, like the one you said, Connor, about the dog, and about forgiveness and about love. And you know what? God speaks to us through the Bible. Have you heard God talk to you before? You have? That is very special, right? Not everybody gets that experience. Some of us do, but we all can hear God speak through the Bible. And you know, the books you read, that was one book, right? Is the Bible one book? <laughs> Good guess, Tyler. <laughs> it is multiple books. How many books do you think are in the Bible? 20. 10? 20? 100? Wow, that's a big jump from 20 to 100, Connor. Huh? There are 66 books in the Bible. And the Bible's made of two parts. Do you know what they're called? The Old Testament. Oh, yeah, and the New Testament. And how many books do you think are there? 66 total. Nathan, you're the math genius. Close. How many do you think are in the Old Testament? You're really close. Easton? Oh, right in between there. There's 39 books in the Old Testament. How many does that leave for the New Testament? No, there's 66 total. I'm testing your math skills. Easton? What is 66? Minus 39. You're close. Okay. It's 27. So 39 and 27. Okay. So the Old Testament 
is about the history of people and God and God working with people and laws and guidelines that God set down for us. The New Testament, who's big in the New Testament? Do you know? Who's, who's the main character in the New Testament? You see him all the time in the New Testament. You hear about him. Jesus. Yep, Tyler, you're right. Yep, and his 12 disciples are in the New Testament. You're right, Nathan. But Jesus came. Why did, why did Jesus come? You tell me, Nathan. To talk about um, God. Yeah, and he came to save us, right? And to teach us about love. And that love is most important. Love of God and love of people. Okay, um, do you know that the Bible is the most read book in the world? The entire world. How many languages do you think the Bible has been translated into? Hannah? Um. Take a guess. How many of you, here, how many of you guess 50, 100, 200, 300, 4, we're going up, 704 languages the Bible has been translated into. Oh, yep, Spanish is one of them. You're right. You're right. So think of all the people who read the Bible. So when you pick up your Bible, just think of all the people around the world that are also reading the Bible. And, you know, the New Testament, you're going to learn some of those books today because Nancy's going to help teach a song about the books in the New Testament. Okay. How many people write a book normally? The books that you read, how many, what authors they're called, right? How many? One. One. You're right, Hannah. One or two. Sometimes more, but usually one or two. Do you know how many people wrote the Bible? Forty. Over 40 people. Fifty. You'd be close, Nathan. And you know what? God inspired all those people to write down his stories. And some wrote more than one book. Paul, do you recognize that name? Yeah. That's right. Paul wrote 13 books of the Bible. And David, you know who David is? Nope, but you know David because what did he do? He, he beat Goliath, you're right. Yep. It's the little guy beating the big guy, right? That's right, with a slingshot. Yep. And you know what? If you take your Bible and you go right to the middle and you open it, what do you know what book you'll be in? Psalms. Dave, there are 150 chapters in Psalms, and David wrote 73 of them. So he wrote a lot. Who do you think wrote the most words in the Bible? Not Jesus. Jesus didn't write any of the words, Easton. But you know what? Jesus inspired. He helped humans write it. This is an old, old person in the Bible. It's one of the first people. Well, yeah, he's near the beginning. Easton? Nope. St. John comes later in the New Testament. Nathan? Ooh, that's a good guess, a little bit later than Adam and Eve. Who was a big, big leader? He helped part the Red Sea. Starts with an M. Moses. Do you know that Moses wrote 20% of the words in the Bible? 
Yeah, isn't that crazy? You know what else is cool about the Bible? You can read a little bit or you can read a lot. That's right. You could read it over and over. And you know what I find? Tyler, can you sit up, buddy? Thank you. Um, sometimes when I'm sad or I feel lonely, I can go to my Bible and open it, and it's like God's talking to me because I find a verse that's like, wow, thanks, God. That's what I needed to hear today. And so I'm super excited that some of you are getting your Bibles. How many of you have a Bible already? Yep, and, and the rest of you will be getting one, and it's Hillcrest gift to you. And you know what? We would give a Bible to anyone who needed it because we want them to know God loves them, right? So you can find help in any situation with the Bible. It's a very, very special gift. Okay, can we pray? Thank you, God, for the Bible. Thank you for inspiring humans to write it. Help us to understand it, but more importantly, God, help us to use it, not to let it sit on a shelf and get dust on it. Help us to shake it off and realize it's your way of reaching us. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Good morning, everyone. We are going to ask the kids, except for the three that are receiving their Bibles, you guys can go sit down. The three that are getting your Bibles can hang out up here. So in the United Methodist Church, we have a deep history of faith milestones. Milestones are the significant development markers we experience throughout our lives. They are our first, our first steps, our first tooth, our first word. There are also firsts in our faith life, our first Sunday school class, learning about Holy Communion, learning about baptism, and as teenagers, the biggest milestone that will bring them into full membership of the church, confirmation. Today we are celebrating the faith milestone of my own Bible with Nathan Kahn, Ellie Engel, and Tyler Kuyper. In the United Methodist Church, we traditionally give each child in the church family a Bible at one of two points in their life, when they reach third grade or when the child in the family join our family. Receiving the Bible in elementary school gives the children a chance to become comfortable looking up scripture in the Bible as they grow into their faith and to establish a solid groundwork of going to the word when they are in need of spiritual help or motivation. As we have learned over the past 18 months, sometimes life messes with our best laid plans. Unfortunately for Nathan, he was set to get his Bible on Easter Sunday, March 2020. So we thank you, Nathan, for waiting through this awful pandemic until we could give you the Bible in person because it is very important for us to see you receive it. So with that, I turn over to Pastor Jill and our presentation of our Bibles. Hi, guys. Hello. Well, you have learned a lot this morning about the Bible, haven't you? Yes. You've learned it's a big book. You've learned it's a popular book. You've learned it's the most read book in the entire world. It does have a lot of versions, doesn't it? Well, you're going to get a version called the NIV version. And that's a good version for kids because it uses language that we can understand. So the only words of advice I have for you guys is you learn there's 66 books. And oh my gosh, there's like, oops, you're going to get the NLT version. That's even a better version. There's 759 pages in this thing. So my only coaching to you is do not try to read it from beginning to end because that is really hard. Like Jill mentioned, sometimes she just picks it up and opens it to a page and reads a little bit of that page. But what I like to coach people on is if you're going to read the whole Bible, chunk it out. Read a couple pages a day. And I like to start in the New Testament because it's a little easier for my brain. And I like to start in the book of John. So if you start out in the book of John, which is in the New Testament, 
and you read a couple pages, and every night you read a couple more pages, then you can kind of keep reading through the New Testament, and when you get your brain really warmed up, then you can go to the Old Testament, because the Old Testament is kind of some, some tough reading and some tough stories. And I like the New Testament a little bit because it's easier to start with. So that's my only words of advice. Start in the New Testament first, okay? So with that, I am so excited. Nathan, as we mentioned earlier, um, we had planned on giving you this a year ago, but that crazy pandemic came. Oh, would Pastor Jerry come up? Where are you, Jerry? Come forth, Jerry. So we're going to have Pastor Jerry give you this, Nathan. And when Pastor Jerry gives it to you, he's going to say a little prayer over you, too. Here you go. Heavenly Father, be with Nathan as he grows and matures in your life. Bless him. Keep him in your path. And help him to grow in wisdom, knowledge, and strength. In your name, amen. Amen. Ellie, you are next, my dear. <clears throat> dear Lord, bless Ellie as she goes to become a young lady, growing, maturing in your strength and your faith. Help her to always remember what's in the Bible and to live a good life. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. And lastly, Mr. Tyler. Heavenly Father, be with Tyler as he grows up and becomes a young man, going about the world, creating a family perhaps, a, a career, a new life. Guide him, walk, have him walk in your path for the rest of his life and always bless him and bless all of these three as they grow and mature in your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you three just stand up here for me and we're going to say a prayer of blessing over you. You guys can all stay seated, but if you'd be kind enough to put your hands out in front of our folks. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless these children. We ask that you guide them and follow their path throughout their life and fill their hearts with joy, with peace, and with justice. Amen. Congratulations. You guys can all be seated. I am so excited to, to do this next song for you. And this is for the, the kids who just got their Bible and all the other kids, but it's also for everybody. Um, I guess the best way to explain it is it's, I think it's really important to know the books of the Bible. And this is going to be the books of the New Testament. You remember in, in when you were a kid, the, how you learned your ABCs. You learned it by singing a song. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. That's how you learned it. And that's how I learned the books of the New Testament. They're not up there good. Raise your hand if you know all the books of the New Testament in order. Kathy, yay. Yay, excellent. And I do too. And I'm going to tell you how I, I'm going to repeat them so you know that I'm not just cheating. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Corinthians 1 and 2, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 and 2 Peter, 3 Johns, John 1, 2, and 3, Jude, and Revelation. Did I get them? Yes, I did. And I did that because I learned this song in this very church in Bible school. Vacation Bible School. I think I was 10 years old when I came to Bible school and I learned this song. And I think it's really important that we know them. And, you know, when you're flipping through it, okay, turn to this book in the, you know, if we're doing a Bible study or 
you just know where it is. You know Jude is kind of near the back. And, you know, it's, so I think it's really important to, so I'm going to sing it for you. Um, George and, and Chris are going to play along with me. I'm going to sing it through, and then we are going to have the words up there. And if, once you get the tune, you can, um, it'll be easy to sing along. And then if you keep practicing it, um, it'll just come, just like learning the ABCs. Okay, and we're going to do this in the key of D. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, Acts, Romans, 2, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrew, James, 1st Peter, 2nd Peter, Three Johns, Judo, never Revelations. Revelations. <laughs> okay, so um, one thing I learned, uh, Philemon, and I'm I'm learned subsequently. It's really pronounced by Lehman, but I still sing Philemon because it goes better in the song. So <laughs> that's my story. I'm sticking to it. So the words are going to be up on the screen. Um, the tune is pretty simple. Sing along the best you can. We're going to do it a couple times. Ready? Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, Acts, Romans, 2, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st Peter, 2nd Peter, Three John, Jude, and Revelations. How is that? Pretty easy? Kind of getting it? Let's do it one more time. Ready? Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Acts, Romans, 2, Corinthians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. First and second Thessalonians. First Timothy, second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrew, James, first Peter, second Peter, three John, Jude, and Revelation. Thank you. Okay, if we can have the three Bible receivers come, they're going to read your scripture today. Then he said, there was once a man who had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, I want right now what's coming to me. So the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant country. Then there he won he was everything he had after he had gone through all of his money he there was a bad famine although that country he began to feel it he sa he signed on with a citizen, he would have eaten who assigned him to his fields to stop to slop the pigs. He was so hungry he would have eaten the corn cobs in the pig slop. But no one would give him any. 
that brought him to his senses. He said, all, the, all those farmhands working for my father sit down to three meals a day, and here I am starving to death. I'm going back to my father. I'm, I'll say to him, Father, I signed against, I sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son. Tell me on as a hired hand. He got right up and went home to his father. When he was still a long way off, his father saw him, his heart pounding. He ran out, embraced him, and kissed him. The son started his speech. Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. But the father wasn't listening. He was calling to the servants. Quick, bring a set, clean set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then get a prize-winning heifer and... Roast it. We're going to feast. We're going to have a wonderful time. My son is here, given up from for dead and now alive, given up for lost and now found, and they began to have a wonderful time. All this time his older son was out in the field. When the day's work was done, he came in. As he approached the house, he heard the music and dancing, calling over one of the houseboys. He asked what was going on. He told him, your brother came home. Your father has ordered a feast, barbecued beef, because he has him home safe and sound. The older brother stomped of in an anger skull and refused to join in his father, came out and tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't listen. The son said, Look how many years I've stayed here serving you, never giving you one moment of grief. But have you ever thrown a party for me and my friends? Then this son of yours who was who who has thrown away your money shows up and you you go all out with a feast. His father said, son, you don't understand. You're with me all the time and everything that is mine is yours. But this is a wonderful time and we had to c celebrate this brother of yours was dead and he's alive. He was lost and he was found. All of our kiddos can head back with Miss Bonnie. She is in the back and she will be leading Sunday school this morning. And please be with me in this time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we have come this morning as a group of your children of believers who have come to adore you, have come to worship you, and clearly have come to thank you. Lord, we are so excited to be back in our worship space, even if it's with these crazy masks on, even if we still have to do some social distancing, Lord. We are so excited to be back together as a community of faith, to be giving Bibles to our young people, to be celebrating and having conversations afterwards in Fellowship Hall, in this beautiful worship space that you have given us. Thank you, O oh God. God, we also come this morning to ask for forgiveness. We are a sinful people, so we ask that you would forgive our sins, whether in thought, word, and deed, 
for what we have done yesterday, what we may be sinning this morning, and what we may even be doing to sin this afternoon or this evening. Please forgive us, Lord. Give us your mercy and give us your peace and your hope. Lord, we pray for all of the atrocities going on around the world, whether they be floods, whether they be fires, whether they be murders in the streets, Lord, whether they be evacuations, whether they be tortured, Lord. It is a crazy, crazy time. And we just ask your blessing on those who are suffering, suffering financially, suffering mentally, suffering emotionally, and people who are literally this morning, Lord, running for their lives. We ask that you would bless them, you would keep them, that you would put your arm around their shoulder and give them hope, whether it be in this world, Lord, or in the world to come. Lord, we take all of these blessings and adorations and requests and we lift them up to you this morning, Lord, along with our silent prayers. Lord, we wrap all of these prayers up in our bundle and we lift them up and lay them at your feet, along with the prayer that your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And here at Hillcrest, we have written a breakthrough prayer. It is a prayer that we pray every Sunday and hopefully the days of the week that you aren't in this worship space. It's a prayer for God and the Spirit to direct us as we continue living into our new vision of becoming a blessing place for those not only in our worship space, but outside of these walls. So please pray our breakthrough prayer with me. Jesus, you are with us. You are our friend and our guide. Through prayer and discernment, deepen our personal experience of you and your dream of harmony. Help us appreciate our differences and guide us in how we can best be a blessing place, applying our unique gifts to serve and change the world in your name. Amen.
Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you this morning, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So your first question this morning after hearing our kiddos read the scripture is, why does Jesus tell this parable anyway? Well, actually, Jesus tells three parables with the same theme. You know, it's great to be found, to be welcomed home after a time of way. And just like it's always exciting to go on a trip or a long vacation, it's, we all know it's really nice to come home, unpack, do the laundry, to kind of get back into our routine, to see our friends, and to do familiar things. Now, the three parables are the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the lost son, or the way we know it is the parable of the prodigal son. So I had to look up the word prodigal this morning because I didn't really know what it meant. The word prodigal means spending money recklessly or being extravagant. So all three parables are the subject of recovering the loss, which is the explanation of why Jesus receives sinners and eats with them. They're lost, but he wants them to be found. So have you ever been in a lunchroom or on the playground or at a party, and you notice there's this person kind of sitting all by themselves. They kind of look embarrassed. They kind of look lonely. They're kind of looking around the room. They really want somebody to notice them to acknowledge their humanity, to perhaps to even come over and have a conversation with them. And that is exactly what Jesus did. He hung out with all types of folks, acknowledged them, had conversations with them, and respected their humanity, regardless of what their occupation was. And Jesus' parables are based on real life situations though they often veer off into these kind of unexpected course of events in very surprising ways. And you see, it's these surprises that teach us lessons. In the parable the kids read this morning, this, this morning, Jesus relates the situation of a father and two sons, one who can't wait to get his inheritance. And as a kind of a reminder, in Jewish society, there were these laws regarding how these inheritances worked. And they were typically divided. The oldest brother got the double share while the other brothers got a single share. And the girls got nothing. And in this case, there's two brothers. And so in this Jewish society, the older brother would have got two-thirds and the younger brother would have got one-third. But in this parable, the younger son demands his share of the property right now. He wants his father's inheritance now. Well, let's think about that for a minute. He's asking the father to give him one-third of everything that he owns right now before he dies. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm going to guess there are some fathers out here in, in the worship space and online that wouldn't be too excited about giving up their inheritance before they died. I mean, how many of you would really comply with your kiddos if they asked for their inheritance right now? You know, most people, as we grow older, you know, we use our money to kind of pay for our end-of-life care and our food and our entertainment. And we think whatever's left when we're gone, that's what the kiddos are going to get. But that's not what he was asking for. He wanted it now. And despite that breathtaking and insulting request, the audacity of the younger son's request the father grants it. How amazing is that? Just like today, when we pray for things that are crazy and wild and all out there, God listens to you, and many times he gives us what we ask for. And then he prays that we will use our free will to either give it back, to not use it, or to use it judiciously. And after he gets his one-third of his father's estate, he boogies out, he takes off, he's gone, he leaves the Holy Land, 
and he goes out and he squanders all of his money to the point where he ends up working for a pig farmer, helping to slop and clean up his hog's mess. But eventually he looks around and he thinks, oh my gosh, even the land owner that he works for, even his people are treated better than he is. And he thinks, oh my gosh, I bet my father's hired hands would be treated better than this. I think I'll head back, see what's going on, repent. So he plans his return. And he says three things to his dad. He says, Father, I've sinned against God and you. I'm really no longer worthy to be called your son, so maybe you could just treat me like one of your hired hands. Because even being treated as a hired hand was better than slopping the pigs. So what do the actions of this crazy prodigal son teach us today? Well, they teach us a couple things. Number one, they teach us that the depths to which our own misuse of our freedom, what will happen? When we're left to our own devices, we make poor choices and we screw things up. Number two, if we're bent on leaving God, things will typically go badly for us. We will be humiliated and left into an uncaring world, primarily left in the corner with nobody having a conversation with us. And the further we get away from God's love, the worse off we're going to be. And fourthly, the best thing that we can do is put our tail between our legs, tuck our ego in our pocket, turn on a dime, and come back to God and ask for forgiveness. And that's indeed what the son does. He comes back to the father and he says, I blew it. I am so sorry. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against God. Please, please, please take me back. And you know what the father does? He does the un-Jewish, unmanly, uncharacteristic thing. He turns and he runs towards his son. And he embraces him, and he loves on him, and he says, forget the past, we're going to have one big old party, because you're back. And you know what? That's exactly what God does when we come back to him. He doesn't count the days that you weren't in this worship space. He doesn't count the days that you stayed home. He doesn't count the days that you didn't raise up your voice in song or prayer. He says, forget about it. The slate is wiped clean. You are back, and I am joyous. I am joyous. And those are the lessons that we can pull, or the takeaways, if you would, out of that message that you heard the kiddos read this morning. We have a genuine father who genuinely loves us and is sitting in heaven waiting for us to come back. He doesn't care what we did yesterday, the day before, what we're going to do today or tomorrow. He just wants us back. He wants us back to forgive us, to shower us with his love, his joy, his forgiveness, and his mercy. So I know this morning, this is the first time back for many of you in this worship space. Or maybe it's the first time that you're back online with us. And it doesn't matter. We didn't count the days that you weren't here. We didn't count the days we missed you. We just know and we are so excited that you are back today and that you will continue coming back, whether it's in person or online. We're just happy you're back. So welcome home. Welcome home this morning. Amen.
Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you take these tithes, these offerings, and all of our time. We lift them up to you, Lord, that you would multiply them, and that you will justly distribute them to those who are most in need. Amen. Please be seated. I think we'll uh, close with our, our ending hymn. Um, are the kids in the back? If they are, we'd like to invite them to come up and sing with us. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. It's a fun song, and if the kids are anywhere near, I'd like them to, to come up and sing from the front with us. Please stand as you're able to, and let's sing together. Here they come. Come on down, kids. Let's sing this song. You all know this. blessing I would like to invite all of you back into fellowship hall might be the first time some of you have been there since it's gone through its transformation please notice the beautiful piece of art above the fireplace that uh, Christian and the kiddos did from the uh, child care center and we're hoping to get them to do more art for us so with that please accept this blessing dear Heavenly Father May the joy that you give us be deep down in all of our hearts. And may we practice joy and love and justice as we walk along life's path. May you have a blessed day and a blessed week. And may you talk about Jesus this week. Amen. <laughs>